Okay, hello again. Uh, we're going to continue where we left off. And apologies, the last video uh, was a little bit cut off at the end. We were looking at this program right here. Uh, let's go ahead, and I mentioned the very best way is to compile and run these programs. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do that exact thing. Now, in some of the slides and in your book, uh, it's uh, you're advised that you can use the notepad, you know, that comes bundled with Windows and it comes bundled, you know, most, most OS's, you know, Mac OS or Linux, there's a bundled text editor on Windows. I strongly recommend you use one of these free open source editors. And here's one that I like. This is called Notepad, actually Notepad++. Here is the program in an editor. Uh, notice in this kind of an editor, uh, it's color coded or sometimes called chroma coded. Different language constructs are different colors. For example, here comments and comments which are preceded uh, by these two double forward slashes are in green. Now in, in uh, the Java programming language and other programming languages as well, there's more than one way to do a comment. This is also a comment up here. A comment is anything. This is the beginning of the comment. You can see me highlighting right there uh, a forward slash and a star. This is the end of the comment. Everything in here is the comment itself. So these are the comment delimiters. This is the comment. Uh, you can see the language reserved words are in this sort of purplish color. Uh, code, uh, code supplied by you. Uh, that's just in the plain text here. Uh, constants are in kind of this orange text. Uh, so, uh, and this is out on Blackboard for you. Uh, I strongly recommend that you, you do this as often as you can. Uh, this, you know, writing code learning programming languages and things this is very much excuse me this is very much a learn by doing type activity so let's go ahead and and compile and run this okay on this is windows 10 uh, that i'm working on today uh, but this will work on windows all the way back to back to windows xp and before um, there's similar things on mac and linux I'm going to go ahead and open up a command prompt. So here's a command prompt. Um, it's yellow and red. Those are just colors I've set myself. You can see it just bring up the properties. Uh, yours will come, probably come up in default on your computer uh, as just a black background with sort of white text. I just find this just slightly easier to see. Um, so let's bring that up. Now, if you recall from week one, uh, we said that the way uh, the way to run one of these programs, there were some camp, some things you had to do on the command line. The first thing I want to do uh, is I want to go to the directory where this program resides. Where does this program reside? Okay, so here on my computer, I've actually got it out on my Google Drive, uh, so it's uh, out in the cloud, but locally on my computer, it's on a drive. I have a lot of drives on my computer, so it's just drive H, Google Drive, classes, IS 600 week 2, and the name of the file is computearea.java. Let's just go there. So I'll go to H, and I'll go CD, to Google Drive, go to classes, go to IS. Oops, I'll go to IS 600. Uh, I'll go to week two, and what's in that directory? There it is, computearea.java. Okay, recall from week one, uh, we indicated that the way to uh, run to compile and run one of these programs we would use the Java compiler the Java compiler is Java C for not surprisingly Java compiler 
So what does the Java compiler take? It takes you, uh, you type the name of the compiler and the name of the file that you want to compile. Uh, by the way, I'm using command completion. I just hit the tab key. Uh, and if you type a little bit of the command, uh, the operating system will look to try to complete, you know, try to find a match and complete it for you. Enormously handy. Um, okay, uh, so what if we have here? Jawback compute area dot Java. Let's go ahead and try to do that. I'll go ahead, hit return, and what happened? Jawback is not recognized as an internal external command. So what is it telling us? It's telling us that it doesn't know what this is. It doesn't know what Jawback is. Um, it doesn't know what it is because it doesn't know where to find it. Why doesn't it know? Because we haven't told it where to find it. So let's go ahead and do that. Recall also from week one, we indicated you've got to set this path environment variable. So I'm going to go path equals percent path percent. So that says I'm going to re I'm going to append the location of the Java the Java compiler to this path environment variable. What is the path environment variable when the operating system, this command interpreter on your operating system, the command interpreter is just what receives your keyboard input. Uh, if it's not a command that it understands, not a command that's native to the operating system, the path environment says, uh, the path environment variable says, if you don't know what this is, here are all the places that you should look for a command. And you know what, before we even do that, there's some settings here already. Let's see what it is. So these are settings that other programs have put on there. Here I have some programs from Intel. Uh, here I have some programs from Microsoft for SQL Server. Here I have some Google programs. These are, uh, here I have a Unix command uh, environment for, you know, something for Windows. Um, these are all uh, things that have been added to the path environment variable uh, previously. Um, we're going to go ahead now and add the location of Java. So let's just get to it and do it. So path equals percent, path percent. Uh, so that says uh, take whatever was there, and that's all this stuff, um, and append to it the location of the Java compiler. I'm going to separate that with a semicolon, and now where is the Java compiler? When I installed it, I know that I installed it in C, colon, backslash, now program files. Again, I'm going to use command completion. I don't want to type all that. Uh, program files, backslash, J Java. Okay, how are we doing? JDK. Now this is uh, JDK 1.7. Or Java 7. Uh, Java 7 or Java 8, either one, if you've installed it on your machine, either one will work fine for everything we do in this class. Um, okay, where I want to specify a directory, uh, and that directory is bin. I close it up with a quote, so notice this long string C column backslash program files Java JDK 1.7.0 underscore 71 slash bin. Yeah, it's a lot to type, that's why I used the command completion. Notice it's enclosed by these strings. I'm going to complete the whole thing with a semicolon and voila. Um, why did I select this directory, JDK 1.7? Uh, point zero underscore seventy one dash bin uh, backslash bin. This is where this is very important. This is where I installed the Java development kit. So I installed it on my C drive uh, in this directory structure. You will need on your machine. Uh, chances are you have a different version. You might install it in a different place. If you take the defaults, so it'll. It'll install into this program files directory on uh, on Windows, uh, but you will need to put in what you have done. Chances are, 
uh, you will get a different version of of the JDK than I have right here. Uh, but this is this is the what the command looks like now. Let's see if it did anything. Um, yeah, see, notice, notice, it's appended this long path here. So now, let's go ahead and go and run this. Compute area .java. Okay. All right. It didn't complain at me. Uh, it just quiet. It, it just ran. Didn't give me any feedback, but it ran and it finished. So let's see if it did anything. Notice here I had some uh, two files in this directory. What have I got now? Ah, voila. I've got a third file here called computeArea.class. This is the file we're actually going to run. This is the this is the program that's going. This is the executable part of what we've just done of of, of the program. So this Java file, that's this file right here. This is the source code. This is the human readable source code. This file here, computeArea.class, that's the binary file. That's the executable file. Uh, for those of you, not terribly important for IS 600, but for those of you who just want to know, uh, this is composed of what's known as Java bytecode, uh, and it's interpreted by the Java virtual machine, a layer, a software layer. Uh, that sits between your Java programs and the local operating system. The local operating system being, you know, being Windows, Mac, Linux. Those are the three most common. Certainly, that's not all there is. Um, and this virtual machine, this layer, uh, this is uh, what allows Java uh, to work so well in a cross-platform, a multiple-platform environment this code here will run uh, equally well on uh, any of the major operating systems. It'll run great on Windows, uh, Mac, Linux, and others as well. Let's go ahead and run it. So Java compute area and notice I don't put the extension. This is the command right here. Java compute area. I go ahead and run it. And there we go. The area for the circle of radius 20 is 1,256.636. So congratulations. You've, uh, uh, you're have you starting to write some programs here. Uh, when we return, we'll uh, look at another important, in the next video, well, when we return, we'll look at another important concept, reading input from the console. Notice there. Uh, all the input it was canned if you will it was uh, it was in the program already suppose we want to have the user have the capability to go ahead and enter some input so we'll do that uh, we'll, we'll look at this in our next video see you see you in the